Hello everybody and welcome back. Um, so this uh, on top of my bench here is kind of uh, a little bit of an end of the end of an era for me. So I thought I'd save this thing just kind of for uh, for my own little museum just for my collection. Uh, what this is is this is a console off of an older x-ray machine and uh, it was built and installed in 1981 and we just pulled it out of service last week and uh, this is an old style single phase x-ray generator this is just the console from it the whole the rest of the x-ray machine we disposed of but i just thought it'd be cool to hang on to this and i thought i'd just do a little show and tell and show you this this is not what this video is actually about but i thought i'd show it to you so this is the this is made by a company called amrad at least that's what they call it was amrad and uh, funny thing about AMRAD, it was actually owned by the Raytheon Corporation in America. And eventually Raytheon dropped the AMRAD name and uh, chain, just call, they just called the company Raytheon Medical Systems. Raytheon then got bought out by Fisher, and then Fisher got bought out by Hologic and so forth and so on. And eventually it, the whole operation got shut down, and Raytheon is no longer in... Uh, building x-ray equipment anymore so anyways one of the neat things about this console is that it very clearly shows you the three parameters that that we use um, when x-raying a patient um, there's three parameters that we adjust to get the proper exposure techniques in order to uh, get a proper image for the doctor to read and you can see on the left um, I'll zoom over here. We see a meter that reads in milliamps. And in the x-ray industry, they don't say milliamp years or milliamps. They say MA. It's all like one word almost, MA. <laughs> and uh, you'll hear me a lot of times use that phrase. And that's why, because for 30 years, um, I refer to milliamp, milliamps as MA. So, uh, and this is why. Um, MA represents the current that in milliamps that is flowing through from the anode to the cathode of the x-ray tube and we're going to get into that later and you can see it's adjustable we have several different preset ma stations as we call them to vary the amount of current flowing through the tube the next parameter that we adjust is called kv or kilovolts um, once again uh, a lot of times we don't call it kilovolts uh, we call it, or 1,000 volts, we call it kV. And 1 kV is 1,000 volts, of course. And uh, that is adjustable by these two knobs. Uh, and they're very self-explanatory. kV major will make a big jump in the, you know, in the voltage adjustment. kV minor is for fine-tuning. So, as you can see, this machine is capable of outputting between 40,000 volts or 40 kV, 40 kilovolts, all the way up to about 125 to 130 kV. Okay, so as you can see, now um, other x-ray machines that are out there can output up to 150,000 volts or 150 kV, and these are ones that are used for diagnostic. In other words, they're used to take images of the human body to be able to image your internal organs, your bones, whatever. Um, now there was another version of these generators, not, not AMRAD, but you know other manufacturers that outputted way above this, uh, over 300 kV or 300,000 volts. And they used great big x-ray tubes. And those were actually used for radiation therapy to treat cancer. Um, we don't use that anymore. Um, the technology has changed. We use linear accelerators and things like that now. But anyways, just some interesting facts. Uh, the last parameter that we adjust is the time. And you can see the time is listed in seconds. Some people liked to use fractional, you know, fractional time. Some people like to use decimal. So they put both on here. Again, that's the way it's been for many, many, many years. And uh, we have a couple different receptors that we can select. One for the table 
and one for the wall stand. So there's a stand that you that's against the wall. You can stand against, like if you're having your getting an X-ray of your lungs to check for pneumonia or something like that. And then there's one for the table that you can lay down on the table and you know do X-rays of your leg or abdomen or whatever you need. So that it's a very simple machine, and uh, you have two buttons to make an X-ray exposure prep. And we'll talk about those things later on. And you have the actual exposure button, the red button, to make, take the x-ray. Now, kind of interesting fact is that the time and the current kind of work hand in hand. Um, if you multiply the two together, you get a factor that we refer to as mass, which is just a, an acronym that means MA seconds or milliampere seconds. And they're interchangeable. So... Um, the higher the MA, the faster the radiation will expose the receptor, which would be your film or your digital detector or whatever. Um, so obviously if we increase our current through the tube, we can decrease the amount of time that the exposure is on. It's very similar to a regular camera that has an iris. You know, the more light you let in, the less time that the, that the shutter has to be open on your camera. It's the same idea. So uh, just a real quick, I mean, there's just a scratch the surface of, you know, how an x-ray machine works. Um, if you want to learn more theory about the function of an x-ray machine itself or how a generator works, um, let me know down in the comments. But really, uh, this is just a quick show and tell. But really what we're doing is uh, this particular um, video is, going, is really about the next thing that I'm going to show you here. So let me get it out and I'll show you. Okay, so here's what we're really doing this video about. And like I said, this video is more of a show and tell. Um, it's a part two series that I'm going to, it's a two part series I'm going to do. And part one, which is we're in right now, I'm just showing you what this is. Part two, uh, and of course, a lot of you may be interested in just this just out of curiosity. Part two will actually involve theory, and uh, maybe some of you technical folks or electronics folks out there may be interested in that video. That's why I'm going to do this in two separate videos. So what this is, is this is an, a modern x-ray tube, and it's sitting here on this little towel because it still has oil on it. Um, if you go way, way back in my videos, I did do a video on an x-ray tube already. And the, the x-ray tube at, on that one was still in the full housing. Um, this is the actual x-ray tube, but in our profession we call this the insert. Okay, It's actually the vacuum tube itself. And we call the x-ray tube is the whole assembly, which would be the housing that this is mounted in and the, the stator and all those things, all one piece, that's the tube, this is the insert. So uh, it's just a terminology thing that we use. Now this is very similar in some ways to a regular vacuum tube that you're used to seeing. And we've seen lots of vacuum tubes on this channel and uh, other channels. Um, so there are similarities and there are some pretty big differences as well. And uh, I just wanted to kind of give you an overview of this vacuum tube. Um, if you look inside of here, just this is what we would consider a diode tube. So it only has two elements. It has an anode and a cathode. The anode is this little, this round disc over here. It's a big old thing. And this is a small x-ray tube, uh, like a, that you'd see on a small radiographic x-ray machine. Um, if you were looking at a CAT scanner or a cardiac cath lab, catheterization lab, anything like that, they're much larger than this tube. Uh, this tube can handle, this particular one can handle up to 125,000 volts or 125 kV. And uh, you can see... Your anode is right here, and then this, this little cup that's in here is called your focus cup, and that, that's actually your cathode. So you can see how large of a space there is between the cathode and the anode. If you were to look inside of a vacuum tube out of your radio or your amp, guitar amplifier or whatever, those, these two elements would be much, much, much closer together. 
And the reason you have to have that distance is because of the, the high voltage potential that we're applying across this tube. And again, I'm not going to get a whole lot into x-ray theory on this one. Video number two, I will get into that, uh, part two. And you can see inside here that this tube actually has a filament, just like every other tube, although x-ray tubes commonly will have two filaments, a smaller sized filament and a larger sized filament. And I don't know if I can get you in there close enough, but you see them? So you have your large filament right here and your small filament here and they have very similar characteristics to the filaments the dim and bright uh, filaments of a automobile old-style automobile headlight um, as far as the size of the filament and the voltage and so forth these typically will run at about 12 volts and at maximum current draw these uh, the large filament can draw up to about seven amps or seven and a half amps of current now the current flowing through the filament is not to be confused with MA MA is the current flowing from the cathode to the anode not the current flowing through the filament uh, so this we refer to as filament current and the current flowing from the cathode to the anode we refer to as tube current again I'm going to get into that more in part two so um, you can also see here that the anode looks kind of funny it's got this big shaft on it and at the end of that shaft right here is a bearing it's a very very special uh, very low friction bearing and uh, in the old days, in the 1980s and early 90s, the lubricant that they used in these bearings, I don't know what it was, but a couple companies had some patented versions that literally a very small amount, a uh, little small container of it cost over $200, they said, um, American, just for a tiny little amount of that lubricant and that they use in that bearing. And I've seen these, and the reason there's a bearing in here is because this whole anode rotates. It rotates at uh, two different speeds it can rotate at, either 1,725 RPMs, or I'm sorry, 3,450 RPMs, 3,450, or approximately 10,000 RPMs. And uh, the reason that they rotate the anode is to spread the heat. Um, when you're running these at this high energy, these will get very, very hot. And actually, the, uh, the electron beam that creates the x-rays can actually get so hot, it can actually burn a hole right through that. Even though this is a large piece of tungsten in here, it will still um, burn, okay? Uh, or molybdenum, I'm sorry, it's molybdenum. Um, it can burn right through it. So by rotating that anode, by spinning it at a high speed, you're spreading that heat across this whole disk and helping it to dissipate. Um, so as you can see, that I've seen these older tubes that had the really expensive uh, lubricant in them. I've seen them coast once you get them spinning. If you shut the, shut the machine off, this rotor will coast for over a half an hour to an hour. Uh, pretty amazing uh, how good these bearings are. Now the later tubes, they quit using that high-end uh, lubricant and they don't coast quite as long. They, they maybe coast for five minutes or so, uh, if that. But uh, they still are very, very good um, compared to other bearings that you're used to seeing. And the anode connection is right here. There's a screw terminal that uh, you would connect one side of the high voltage and then the other end of the high voltage would connect on here, which if you look, you have your three filament windings. There's a common one where the, lar where the two filaments are tied together on one end, and then there's a, the small filament, large filament. And you have, not only do you have a current loop from common to the filament, but you have another connected to the common, you actually have your negative high voltage. So it's a differential power supply. You have a negative high voltage going in here, 
with reference to ground and a positive high voltage with reference to here with reference to ground I'm sorry and the differential between that negative and positive high voltage is the actual voltage flowing through the tube being applied between anode and cathode so that's how it works but anyhow just a quick overview of an x-ray tube this is what actually makes the x-ray and no it is not radioactive I have a lot of people ask me that question the only time that radiation comes out of this tube is when it's energized when the voltage is applied to it um, any other time it's just a tube it's just a vacuum tube in other words and it doesn't it doesn't radiate anything in other words when this thing is energized it does not make the glass or the tube or anything radioactive so uh, that's one of the differences so anyways I just thought I'd share that with you real quick and this is part one and uh, I'm going to post this video and then I will immediately go and uh, we'll start working on part two where we're going to get into theory of how this works and how we actually make an x-ray with a vacuum tube and we're also going to compare it um, to a, a non x-ray tube like a standard tube that many of you are familiar with or have seen so going to do a little bit of comparisons to see the differences and the similarities so if that sounds good uh, stay tuned for part two and uh, for any of you who've ever wondered what's inside of an x-ray machine or an x-ray tube there it is take care everyone and we'll be back with part two pretty soon I hope